Okay. Uh, Chris did send us sort of a work in progress one of his own, but I think he had a couple of players who were out of out of the normal positions anyway. In his. Mm. So Ben Curry at loose forward was a questionable yeah. insertion. Yeah. Um, but we don't like questionable insertions. But I've taken the time to to, to pen one. Have you? I have. Yeah. Excellent. Well. Shall I do the honours and then yeah, your, you go your, first. your slightly more sensible version will be... Uh... No, you go first. Okay, so we'll do the backs then first. Um, I've gone for Handbury at Widnes at full-back. Uh, McGilvery on the wing from Huddersfield. Webster as his centre from Castleford. Junior Sow, another centre from Salford. Tom Johnston from Wakefield on the other wing. In the halves, I've gone for Jordan Lilly and Theo Farge from Leeds and Saints, respectively. Front row of Chris Hill from Warrington, Sean Lunt from Hull KR, and... Uh, oh, not Dave Taylor. Scott Taylor. Scott, Scotty Taylor from Hull uh, in the front row. Uh, second row of John Bateman from Wigan and Dave Taylor from Catalan. And then I've put Glenn Stewart in at loose forward. So you've got two players from I've the Catalan Dragons. I've got two players from the Catalan Dragons, which is either surprising at the minute this year. I've been a bit of a, a big fan. wrap around them, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, I've got two players from Warrington, considering the top of the league, I thought. They'll, I'll, I'll give them that due. Um, it, it was my automatic reaction at first to go Farrell and Bateman and add two Wigan players. <laughs> but but I, I stopped short well, and thought I'd give in. a, a more a, a broader view. So I've gone Hambry as well at fullback. Okay. I've gone Tom Johnson on one of the wings. Ken Seo's my other winger. He's my whole KR player. Okay. Um, That's you, the hardest part is, is picking a whole KR player, isn't it? In, it? Well, the other difficult one I found was Salford as well. Um, mm. I've gone with Junior Sal like you did, though. And my other centre is Lero Kudjo, I think has been probably the most consistent mm-hmm. Huddersfield player this year outside of Danny Brough. But I haven't gone with Danny Brough in my halves. I've gone with Carney and Sandow. Yeah. I think my halves have the edge over yours. Yeah. Whilst yours have got a lot of talent. I give you that. Mine have, mine have got all the ability and experience that you'd want. I give you that. Um, at my front row is Lynch, Roby and Cuthbertson. Hmm. And my back row is Curry, Pritchard and Bateman. Lock in the scrum. There you go. Interesting teams. So yeah, I know Bateman hasn't played a ton of loose forward, but he did start the season... In that position, well, you could legitimately put Bateman sort of out into centre if you really wanted to, couldn't you? Yeah. So, uh, not uh, there you go. Interesting one. So, thank so, you. Uh, we always like stuff like that, don't we? A little fantasy, uh, fantasy thirteen. So, if you want to, if you want to chip in and send us, my other idea, over there, my other I idea mean? would be to pick your thirteenth player mm. from the championship. Ah. If I was doing that, I'd probably mm. replace Curry with Harrison Hansen, and that would be me, me done. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I would probably replace Farge with. Well, you can't. You've got to replace one of the t- players you've got. Oh, only two. Team. Oh, right. Okay. Then I will replace. Oh, God. <laughs> Dave Taylor. I think I'll replace Dave Taylor with uh, with Gazok then. <laughs> Seems legit. Okay, nice one though. Cheers, Chris. We enjoyed that. Uh, Malcolm Whittle then, Mark. What did he have to say? Yeah, the last little bit, really. Um, He said, Hi, Mark and Tom. Great podcast as usual. Great idea to replay the first show to celebrate your 100th edition. I look forward to that. Next Tuesday, we at the Devon Sharks are also celebrating 10 years of the club existing on the 3rd of May. So... As you're listening to this, that will have happened at least. I would say so, yeah. Once the episode's posted, it'll be pretty much the 3rd of May. Yeah. And, Congratulations uh, to all well the Devon Sharks. Sharks. There will be a video on YouTube um, where you can watch. Mm-hmm. It's about 40 minutes long, but it sort of traces the history all through the, the start-up and then the, the growth and development of a committee at the club and the early days to then mm. when they were a bit of a title winning force and yeah. then to now the new new stage of the of the club. So... Um, that's that's there for you to that should be up for you to watch from the third of May on YouTube. So search for the Devon Sharks. Yeah, absolutely. On and, YouTube and Malcolm in particular at the club has been a big supporter of the of the Super League pod since day one. Really, he's been involved in sending us messages and retweeting things as well. So uh, we're really grateful to Mal for the support that he's given us from down there in in Tainmouth. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Tom's poll. Yeah. I was struck with inspiration this week with the announcement of the Toronto Wolf Pack. Coming yeah. into uh, how cool is that logo? Into, by the well, way, it's really well done. Isn't someone it? said someone said it looks a bit MLS. I can't remember who to give them the credit, but it, it does look a bit MLS. It's got that American it? look about yeah. it, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it was it was launched this week with uh, with with real fanfare, wasn't it? Nobby was around, and and and, and the mayor of the Toronto. mayor of Toronto came in, and yeah. yeah. So so the the question on my poll really was 
Will there be a Canadian franchise playing in English Rugby League at the start of the 2021 season? So essentially, will do people think that within five years, yeah. in five years, the, the Toronto Wolfpack will still exist? So we put that out there, and uh, and 64% of you said yes, and 36% of you said no. So it's fairly overwhelming, really. Two thirds in favour of people who think that there will be a Wolfpack. It, that it will be, it'll survive. It'll, yeah, it, it's a concept that will grow. So, and I kind of hope it does. I'm not sure how I feel about whether or not it will or won't be a success. I think a lot depends on this backer that they've got, and if they decide to suddenly pull the plug, that could just send it down the plug hole, couldn't it? But yeah, I mean, last week I raised some question marks over it, and I still have s- some reservations. I think. There's there's three ways it can go, mm. and I'm not sure which way is best for rugby league of the two positive ones. There's one that's a negative, mm. which is like you say, the backers could get bored or could realise it's a fruitless endeavour because they're never going to really make the money back. And it seems to be in this world we live in nowadays, people want to make the money back mm. um, all the time rather than just have that generous generosity of spirit to give and give and give to the sport and to the fans. Yeah. Hopefully that's what these people are. Mm. But if not, they might pull out for, for financial reasons. We'll see. But the other two options are, yeah, they stay, they stay in the league. I'm not sure how good that is for growth because that feels like stagnation. Mm. It, 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 Five years. Time. I mean, look at the Catalan Dragons. That are, now we've got to lose, but they've been in and out of the league, haven't they? Yeah. Already. But has the game taken on great strides in France since the Catalan Dragons have come in? It's it's, it's probably not. It's not, it's not made a, a massive leap forward, no, unfortunately. In terms I mean, of the international, what you would have hoped is that as the Catalan Dragons improved and stabilised within Super League over the last ten years, that the French international game would have improved hand in glove with that but it doesn't seem to have does it yeah but even the French domestic game has had mm. uh, you know big bad bad stories of big clubs going going under or mm. having to get relegated or, or what have you like the Pia Donkeys and people oh, like yeah. that who were like champion teams and then to having nothing yeah. um, so it's not stabilised necessarily as much as you would want it to and I hope it really does in France and yeah. I hope the presence now of Toulouse as a force as well will in the English game, outside of that, would um, would help. Mm. But whether the Canadian version of it is sustainable with the distance to travel and all of that, it's a lot of money. So, so if it stays in, how, how much how much does that then give back to rugby league in Canada? Especially if they're going to be based most of their training time and development time and squad time in. England, we will we will have to see. Yeah. But I hope that it becomes more of a Canadian side as the years go by. If that happens, the other exit strategy is to a semi-professional or professional league within North America, yeah. which would be brilliant for rugby league mm. if the Wolfpack could grow to a status where other clubs from other cities in that sort of area want to jump on board. Because you've got, yeah. you know, you've got a city like Hamilton, which is a very close to Toronto, mm. which seems to be the sort of area where I think rugby league could work. Yeah. Um, then not far away, you've got places like Buffalo as well on the other side of the border. So there's a possibility there in that sort of... That Niagara corridor. <laughs> you could call it that. Or, yeah. you know, even expand it out to yeah. the other sort of northern states of... northeastern states of America. Yeah. Uh, but even, particularly ones like Michigan and... Um, Pennsylvania and you know places yeah. where you've got well, you've very got... same sensibilities as you have in the north of England you'd feel with the manufacturing history of those areas yeah. and that sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um, yeah so but, but I, I still don't know how it could go to stay in Super League I, I'm worried I want them to do well and yeah. I want it all to be a success and I want Rugby League to be the biggest sport it can be mm. so let's let's hope let's that get that behind it comes. Um, and I, I don't want to sound negative I'm inherently an expansionist mm. um, I just I just worry that it's such a big endeavour yeah and it's never been done before in any other sport look at the NFL how long they're taking the flip side is if this works and if this model works well, yeah. that means we get our NFL franchise yes. sooner than maybe we would have been doing. Because yeah. it, it does look like there's a 
it's on the table for in about three or four years' time, but right. maybe this could solidify that if the Wolfpack and were them along. Yeah, the we'll Wolfpack. see. I love the name as well, the Wolfpack. I know only because it reminds me of the Hangover. <laughs> because at the moment, Nobby's a one-man Wolfpack, but they'll start recruiting fairly soon, won't they? But yeah, good luck to them, and we did get some feedback as well, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We got a few. Do you want to go through them? Okay. Yeah, uh, JWH got in touch. Your poll, after all, that they're reacting to. Absolutely, I will do you the uh, courtesy of, of responding to your thoughts on my poll. Uh, all for expansion, however, not sure we should have Canadians in the English league unless we change the name. Okay. I don't think the name's called the English league. I think you. No, I just said in English rugby league, as in in one of the tiers of English rugby league. Yeah, I, don't I wanted to leave room for them to. To be promoted. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't want to say will there be one in League One in five years' time, and so we really could have. No, I know. I, I know. I'm just saying. Perhaps he's misunderstood. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Slightly. I've left it open. Yeah. Yeah. No, I left it open on purpose. Because I always thought the E in ESL, as Australians call the Super League, was European. Yeah, it is. Yeah, from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so just playing in English rugby league. Okay. At some level or another. Chris Macy said he certainly hopes so. Uh, it'd be great to see this team go well. Could open a lot of doors for the sport. North America is a big market. And David Lyon said yes, and hopefully for a USA franchise too. Paul Campbell got in touch. And it's uh, a bit of a long-winded one, this one, for Paul. Uh, congratulations to Paul on his impending nuptials as well. well yeah, recently engaged. Good lad. Yeah, I didn't know. Had a girlfriend. Yeah, we did. Yeah, but we've like, talked about it loads. Yeah, but that's seemed fairly recent. I hope he's not jumping the gun. No, it's been since last year, back oh, in the last year, well, I congrats. believe. Good stuff. Congratulations, and thank you for the invite as well, Paul, on the uh, on the stag do. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, we've not talked about it ourselves yet, yeah. so uh, this is for, for at the end of the show. Okay, Paul said regarding Toronto being in League One, if I've read it right, uh, the owner of Toronto said he will help fund clubs to come over. Uh, I presume he's over to Toronto. The RFL don't need to fund this move, as Toronto will fund most of it if they get seven thousand fans. That's more than most clubs in Super League. Uh, the RFL won't need to promote this. This is being done by them. As for being good for the game, I believe it is a very exciting time. If Toulouse can be a success, it will be exciting times in the next couple of years. I believe Toronto will be a success with Rowley as a coach. They have experience at the top. Brian Davies also... Well, well, well before gone. we go on to Brian, just on, Paul, to mm. on Paul's um, things again, they are the positives of it, yeah. that it shouldn't be costing... Our, our, our clubs and our league any money no. um, I, I wonder how much money that they make will filter back into our game you would think they'd have their own mm. TV rights yeah. negotiations that they'd have in their territory I don't know how much of that they'd have to pay back into the pot mm. um, you would imagine they would be all out for their own sponsorship and it wouldn't really make much of a difference if Tim Hortons sponsored them because mm. there's no Tim Hortons over here no um, unless there's some down in London or something. Yeah. But I'd love to have to spread one. around this country. Is better than, I'd rather have that than Starbucks and Costa and Cafe Nero. Yeah. But um, anyway, I digress. But yeah, it's it's hard to see um, all of that. So they'll, they'll, that's how they'll try and recoup the costs that they have for themselves. Mm. But there's a lot of positive noises in terms of the promotion that they're going to be doing. And yeah. apparently they've got 3,000 people signed on. I was to, reading this, yeah. I don't know if it's to buy a season ticket or expressions of interest. It's it's, it's sort of loosely, um, it's loosely worded, wasn't it? But but certainly people interested in in being season ticket holders for the Wolfpack. Mm. You've also got um, things like Rolly throughout the first pitch. Apparently, a, a Blue Jays game, an, an early season Blue Jays game, oh, really? and then you had like the mayor being involved on that side of of it and. Um, yeah, so so there is some really promising noises coming out. Obviously, this has just been launched, mm. so let's hope those noises continue and more excitement can be built over the year yeah. and years to come. I'm looking forward to seeing what the strip looks like as well. Well, I'm guessing it'll be black and white. Mm, from the colour of the logo. Yeah, maybe with a bit of red trim. Yeah, which is disappointing, seeing that that was the route we were going to go down with next season's listener jerseys. But I think um, if it's a, even close to a good-looking strip, I might get one. Yeah. Just for the novelty value as well. So that pumps money in as well, doesn't it? And I think there'll be a market for that in this country. I think there'll be a few people that buy Yeah, and, and you know, we know a lot of people well. whose second clubs are the 
expansion clubs. You yeah. know, Diane has a big soft spot for London Broncos, yeah. and you now all of a sudden are a Carlin fan. I need something to cheer up. <laughs> I need something to get happy about, Mark. Okay, Brian Davies said clubs in places like Toronto, Toulouse, Pepinot, and London give the game access to money and play markets that the historic clubs have constantly failed to reach. There are several players playing for Northern clubs who started playing league in France or the South. That shows how much untapped playing talent there is. At